Good evening, everyone. Our panelists have a wealth of knowledge to share about how to change systems of representation, how to create our own media, and ways we can and already have demanded feminist media justice. We're so delighted that we really had, we really got our top picks for this panel. Anne Lagasse Nelson, Francine Peltier, Martine Vallée. Um, but let me say a few words about Judy. There's not bad result. <laughs> <laughs> Judy Rebick has rightly held the titles of journalist, activist, and academic in an extensive and diverse career. Judy knows a lot. I've learned a lot from Judy. Um, she knows a lot about media representation of women. She knows a lot about so many things. Um, I just can't say enough about her, so maybe I'll just stop. Thanks. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful evening. In terms of this film, I notice, I've talked to a number of people about it, there's a big age gap in reaction to the film. So I want to start out right from that point, which is women, and I think most of us are in the same generation here at the table, who went through the women's movement, and especially went through the women's movement at a time when we were fighting for representation of the media, well, most of us anyway had a pretty negative reaction to the film mainly because she completely ignored the role of the women's movement in representation of women. Ignored both how hard we fought, except for I think there was a thing on the, on the Miss America pageant, and that's where you know feminism in the first feminist action in North America was protesting the Miss America pageant. The second thing that really bothered me was no solutions whatsoever. Just like one thing after another after another of what's terrible with no solution. And the third thing is no recognition of what has really changed. Whereas young women who I've talked to, and not, and not just women in their 20s, but in their 30s and their 40s, who see it and who haven't been involved in the women's movement, for them it's a recognition of oppression, oppression that they feel. The film suggests that the sexist representation of women is worse than it used to be. So my first question, maybe we'll just start with Anne and go across, is do you think that's true? I have uh, two young kids, 8 and 11, and I, I do find that the representation of women in the mass culture, for example, the films they watch, the programs they watch, is quite upsetting, and I'm constantly talking to them about it. Uh, so on the one hand, I'd say that there is real reason for concern, and we saw it clearly documented in the film, you know, scantily clad women. But I would say that in the generation of the news, the production of the news, the people who read the news, uh, there's been enormous progress. I think it depends if you're saying, is the representation uh, of women and girls in the media, is it worse? I think it depends, is it worse since when, what's the time frame you're looking at? Um, is it worse since it was in the 1980s? No, it's a lot better. And that goes to what um, you were saying about the, um, the women's movement, the impact of the women's movement. There was a lot of pressure on the CRTC, on government, to, to do things. And um, I think there was, a, in Canada especially, there was a lot of strides made uh, for women in broadcasting. But I'm not sure whether it's better today than it was 10 years ago. I think that part of that might have to do with the increasing consolidation of the traditional media, and there are fewer media outlets and fewer avenues for um, for, for for different voices and, and um, a variety of portrayals of, of women. You know, to say that it's worse today is to essentially deny that there was ever something is called the feminist movement. So it, it's a little that's much going way too far. I think probably the film would have been better if it had really focused on the hypersexualization of women. I think that is the issue. And the one thing that is not said in the movie, and which I think is really important, and I don't think we've even really had the discussion uh, within the women's movement, is that we feminists have participated in the hypersexualization of women. Really the two dominant images of our times being completely clad or completely naked. And on the naked side, it seems to say, you know, yeah, we, we, you know, we can do whatever we want. We fought for this, we can do it. I did see in young women this na naive pride in being in, in showing off their, their boobs or whatever they had. And what they didn't realize is that society has not evolved enough for this not to, cut, for this not to have a price attached to it. 
What about the way the media treats women in politics? Women who are very male in, their, in the way that they present themselves, those are the women who are accepted uh, as leaders in the media. And women who are more uh, collegial, more you know, softer, if you want, are ignored or are marginalized. I've thought that often that you know there was just one model of woman that could come into politics, and it's la matron. You know, the, the, the asexual. Uh, we're going to tell you how it's going to be done, boys. <laughs> the politics is dying for a sexier model of women, but that has like has it all. I think that maybe somebody needs to make a Canadian version of that film because Canadian women's history is different from the American history, and women in Canada partly because of the history of the country and the cultural context of the country made faster progress on a lot of fronts than in the United States where they still have not endorsed the Equal Rights Amendment. Yeah. Women are recognized as equal in the Canadian Charter. The American women never won that victory. They never won that fight. I think it's much more contradictory than it's portrayed. Like for example, television, you know, The Good Wife, which is on um, network television, has three strong women, two of whom, one of whom is older and very attractive. One of them sort of, you know, this star, and she's a strong, amazing character. And the other one, the only one who uses sexuality is a lesbian. And this is what, this is a popular show, it's in prime time, it's on network TV. You know, this is a breakthrough to me. I'd just like to say that I'm really impressed by all the energy and enthusiasm in the room. It's really uplifting to hear it. You keep doing your good work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I want to, on your behalf, thank, thank the panelists very much. And thank you all for a really great discussion. <laughs>